Hi and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and review number three in the short inbox reviews. So another in the series that I am doing for my friend Keith Short. Uh, some inbox reviews where I'm just taking a look at, look at the box contents and that kind of thing. Uh, to post up for him. So today I'm going to do this. Um, I don't even know how to say that. I'm going to say Rich Models Skoda RSO Rajschlepper Ost. That's a mouthful. Uh, kit number RV35005 in 135th scale. All right, so a quick look at scale mates, and this is a new tool kit. Uh, as of 2012 so fairly newish especially uh, I'd say it qualifies as a modern kit so I am not familiar with this brand at all and I'm not familiar I've seen pictures of this uh, vehicle but I'm not really <clears throat> familiar with it at all so let's go ahead and take a look at the contents of the box so first up, let's uh, before I take everything out, um, let's take a look at the way this stuff is packed. So this is kind of cool. Everything is in uh, separate bags. There are a couple of bags that have two sprues in them. And then uh, these bigger parts like the cab and the simulated canvas cover are in separate bags. And they're divided uh, from the rest of the kit with this cool little cardboard spacer container thing. And then the wheels uh, are also in a separate bag. So that's kind of nice. Kind of keeps everything from getting uh, scratched up and damaged. All right, first up, let's take a look at the instructions. <clears throat> oh, There's some pretty heavy duty uh, paper going on here. Light cardstock, even. Uh, it's booklet type staples um, English, German, and Chinese, I'm assuming. Uh, information on the vehicle nice illustration same one that's on the uh, cover or the box top I should say then on the inside we have the usual stuff here the correct method for applying decals um, looks like you can order X spare parts maybe but only on mainland China the icon instructions pretty typical for uh, modern um, instructions uh, parts layout all the individual parts that are individually wrapped photo etch and decals there's some thread and some small chain So then when you get in the instructions, starts with the engine, just moves on from there. I'm not going to go into great detail on these instructions, but <clears throat> they look pretty well uh, laid out. Just about like any other, you know, as I said earlier, modern instructions. Um, shows you where to use the chain here. Uh, the string that comes with it is obviously for the winch. I um, haven't seen any color call outs yet or like color instructions so um, it'll be interesting to see if it's in the back because I'm only showing not any colors but just uh, part numbers so that's kind of interesting some things need to be drilled Pretty interesting looking uh, vehicle though. Again, I'm not familiar with it at all, but it's pretty cool. But it's a schlepper, and that's always a good thing. Um, pretty straightforward. Looks like it's not too, uh, too crazy. Looks like they've got this laid out similar to the way um, Dragon does it. D22 would be on this side. D3 would be on the other side. I'm assuming that's what it looks like. And then looks like you can pose it with the uh, cargo bed either closed or open. 
and there's parts associated with uh, how that's set up so that's kind of cool and then the back looks like the final thing is putting on the cover if you use it or uh, so you got a canvas top and then you have a medevac version which has some railing kind of things in here so that's kind of interesting so that is the instructions all right so here is the color options so we've got looks like five options so we've got option one uh which is an unknown unknown unit 1944 which looks like an overall gray with kind of a green canvas top um, some decals and you have option two which is normandy june 1944 which is uh looks like dunkel gelb with uh a green canvas top battle of the bulge same color um, very similar decal situation looks like the only difference is the license plates or whatever you call them and then you have an unknown unit unknown license plate and it's a camo scheme and then you have a nor another normandy version in camo and then down here is where we have our colors so it gives the uh, there's basically nine colors steel tire black wood brown clear red khaki dark yellow red brown German gray and olive green and the colors that they list down here which this is kind of nice they've got hobby color which is the C series um, which is a lacquer base and then they have the same it's the same brand but the aqueous line mr hobby the h series which is kind of nice so you can use either the lacquer or if you like that brand of paint um the lacquer or the uh acrylic version then humbrol and tamiya the only bad thing about tamiya colors is sometimes they uh they don't have an exact color they'll they don't even put anything but they do have a tire black now so you could use that there and then wood brown just picking a, an appropriate color but but nice color call outs looks pretty good all right so before i get into the plastic i'll go ahead and look at the extra stuff which is the decals which i'm not going to pull out of the bag um but hopefully you can see they look pretty good yeah i am going to pull them out of the bag because I want to see how thick they are. Mm, not too bad. Maybe not quite as thick as Tamiya. But you can't feel them. But they are a matte finish, so that's kind of nice. Sometimes decals are glossy and they're just kind of a pain to deal with. But the decals look good. They look to be in registers, not a whole lot you can mess up with numbers and going on, you know, black numbers going on white. So that looks pretty good. Then on the other side of the same bag, got some photo etch, which looks which looks pretty good. Pretty thin photo etch, so that's nice. So it'll be easy to bend the ones that need to be bent. The detail looks good. There's textured pattern on here, so that's nice. So that looks good and then there's the string which is basically kind of a fuzz free nylon stuff and some very small chains so that's kind of nice because sometimes it seems like they include chain on a photo etch fret and no matter how much texture and detail you put on it it can look kind of just like exactly what it is flat whereas this is actual linked chain so that's kind of nice hopefully you can uh see that looks pretty good so that is the little extra things all right the first thing um, this was in the bottom I didn't see it whenever I was showing the contents of the box but here's the frame of the vehicle and it looks to be nice and straight it's not twisted or bowed or anything weird like that so that's kind of nice there is a little bit of flash here Let's zoom in so you can see what I'm looking at. A little bit of flash right there. But 
other than that, the detail looks good. There's bolt detail on here. Bolt detail around there. So yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, there is some sink marks on the inside, but you know that you're, you're not going to see that. So uh, it's on both sides. It's where these larger pieces are, but it is on the inside. So if you can see this from the outside of the vehicle. You're not going to see any sink marks. So that's kind of nice. Okay, here are the wheels. So I'm assuming that these are metal wheels. And uh, detail looks nice on these. I mean, I don't know what they're supposed to look like, but they look good. And it's kind of nice because they are marked. Rear left, rear right, front left, front right. So that's nice. You won't get them mixed up because they are handed, it looks like. Now, the one thing that the instructions did show is all these indentations here need to be drilled out, which, you know, that's pretty simple. All those. So, looks pretty good. There's a little tiny bit of seam, mold seam line right there. 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 It looks like, you know, four or five of them all the way around. But they're super, super light. And they're probably going to be real easy to clean off. The wheels. Okay. Here's the cab and the canvas cover. So the cab looks nice. Doesn't look like there's any flash. Maybe a little bit of a flangey kind of area here from the molding process, but that would be easily scraped down. But none around the windows or doors, anything like that. Some nice louvers here. Bolts on this... Uh, upper part of the firewall or whatever you want to call it and there's even the louvers are even on the inside as well now there is an ejector pin mark here but to me that doesn't seem to be a real problem because you'd be hard pressed to see that inside the vehicle and if you're looking that close well but it could be easily cleaned up and then there's some more mold seam lines here but other than that, looks pretty good. Then the top, real nice detail on these flaps right here. And then there's a chain molded on right here that looks good. And it's nice because, I don't know if you can see it in the, in the video, but it's got an individual link detail, like not only on the front, but on the top and the bottom. So uh, once painted and a nice wash put in there would look really good. A little bit of a mold seam line here that would have to be addressed. The back looks nice. It's got some nice little wrinkle detail going on along the edges. And here it's not just flat. So it looks pretty good. The inside, there's no detail on the inside, but you know, you put this thing on there you're not going to see it anyway on the inside so that's not a that's not a big thing so that's the cab and the canvas cover all right so here's sprue a now uh, some of these are double bagged and uh like a and b are one bag c and d are another e f so on so I, you know at least they're in order so it's easy to sort them out but uh this is sprue a and uh, it all looks pretty good nice detail on the uh, differentials here the leaf spring details good so throwing a wash on there will look good a little bit of mold seam line on the top edge and the bottom edge of the leaf springs but real shallow so it'd be easy to clean up these drive shafts here the u-joints there's you know there's no flash or anything there. The molding looks really good on these parts. So apparently this company does a really good job so far. 
with uh, how they mold stuff. These right here, control arms or whatever they are, they're they're nice. The sprue gates aren't too bad. Uh, you want to definitely be careful. I don't know how brittle this plastic is. It feel it doesn't feel like it's real brittle, you know. So cutting those off carefully, you shouldn't have to worry about breaking those. Uh, the exhaust very very little in the way of mold seam lines going on there so the molding on this thing so far looks really really good now then we got this part here this is a long I'm gonna assume this goes on the frame the chassis of the vehicle um, it looks kind of wavy so I don't know if it's supposed to be or if it's just because of the molding process but uh, if it is it's thin enough that it should be you know by careful gluing and manipulating as you glue along uh, should be easily straightened so that is sprue A all right here's sprue B and this uh, looks like the inside of the uh, either the front or back wheels more um, underside parts of the vehicle engine parts engine or transaxles or whatever um, um, bolt details nice bolt detail inside of these are nice I'm guessing those are hubs or something so it all looks really good these nuts right here pretty well defined I'm not seeing any flash on here anywhere so well there's a little tiny bit here but uh, yeah, that's a good looking, uh, good looking detail going on. And all the mold seam lines on the sides of parts are really, really faint. So really easily cleaned up, I think. So that's sprue B. All right, next is sprue C, which is the back of the cab, the bed. Uh, I'm thinking that's the floorboard there floor of the cab I should say maybe no actually I think that might be the back of the cab <sighs> I'm not sure but uh, and then here's the sides and the sides have some really nice wood grain texture to them and and the tailgate you can see there These railings here nicely uh, molded again very very faint mold seam lines now here's the really groovy thing now th these are the I'm assuming the fenders and there's some ejector pin marks but again that's something that's gonna be underneath and it's flat so it'd be easily cleaned up and some faint sink marks there which again would be easy to clean up but here's the thing that's pretty groovy is these tailgate the tailgate and these side um, sides of the bed no ejector pin marks all of these little tabs here are what you used to push that thing out of the mold so <clears throat> that's really nice so there's nothing to have to fill on the inside of there so that's really cool same with these larger parts here again ejector pin marks here but they're underneath far enough that it, you'd really have to be looking well it looks like these actually glue in here which they do these little looks like these little square tat uh, protrusions fit in these indentations here so it would cover up a couple of those so you'd only have a few to clean up if you really wanted to clean them so some pretty good uh molding decisions going on here so that's kind of nice so that is sprue c all right sprue d um <clears throat> looks like more bed parts um looks like fuel uh fuel tank here nice detail on that uh shovel details good on that you might not be able to see it on the video but the metal um extension with the bolts is pretty nice 
tool clamp molded on. It's hollow in the middle there, so that's kind of nice. Wire cutters. Fire extinguisher, maybe? Yep, fire extinguisher there. Nicely uh, molded, faint seam lines. And then these here, whatever those are. Again, fairly small sprue gate, so it should be able to clean up. There's a little bit of flash there on that part. So that you'd want to, um, actually that's an ejector pin dealy, so you don't even have to worry about cleaning up that flash. Just cut it off. Same here and here. It looks like most of the flash is uh, on some of the larger parts and on weird corners and stuff. So looks good. So that is sprue D. Okay, next is sprue E. So more cab parts. Yeah, here's, here's the... Uh, Here's the floor of the uh, cab. I'm assuming that is the backrest of the seat, doors, um, the front louvered side engine covers, fenders, hood or bonnet, depending on where you're from. And uh, yeah. All looks pretty good. These, I'm thinking, yeah, that's the stick shift there, the gear shift, and that looks really delicate. But with careful cutting, it should be fine because it doesn't seem brittle. Uh, some little box of some kind. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it all looks really good. Steering wheel looks nice. Again, nicely molded stuff. Uh, the interiors of the doors. Okay, another fine example. You got some nice detail here. The uh, uh, latch, you know, the lever to open the door. Window crank. Some nice detail on this little plate here. But again, no ejector pin marks. So that is really nice. Now, it doesn't look like there's any flash. There's, there's a slight little um, ridge all the way around, which I'm assuming is for the, uh, the window. The inside of the front grill, nice little uh, Skoda branding going on there. Dashboard, which brings to mind, I wonder if there's a decal for the instruments. So I'm gonna dig around here and see. And yes, individual dials for the dashboard panel there. So that's kind of nice, individual panels. It makes it a little easier. You don't have to worry about getting a decal to settle in really good with <clears throat> setting solution or anything like that. So looks good. Windshield wiper blades, boy, those are really delicate there. Definitely want to be careful chopping those out, but it all looks good. So that is sprue E. Okay, now there are two F sprues. So those are parts of the wheels. Obviously these rings here and such. And then <clears throat> uh, this looks like the parts for the uh, med medical version of this truck. Another drive line. Um, the wheels again, like wheel covers, I guess, or the in inner portion of the wheel. <clears throat> rim, I guess. Not really a rim. Rim would be on the outside, but you know what I'm saying. Again, good detail. Bolt details, nice and clear. Uh, we've got tow rope eye here for the, uh, I'm assuming for the winch. And that's nice. It is um, slide molded, so if you can get that string to cooperate, you can get it to go inside of the um, the ferrule of the tow rope eye there. Headlight. <clears throat> this is kind of nice. This tow club is here and it's uh, slide molded. So it's got the actual eyelets there for the bolt to go through. And that's pretty much it on that one. 
all the parts look good. I don't see any flash at a cursory glance. So again, it's pretty nice molding going on here so far. All right, and here is the last of the gray plastic. This is Sprue G. And this looks like all the engine parts. So again, at a glance, I'm not seeing any flash going on. So you're not gonna have to mess with cleaning that up. And the molding detail is really nice on this uh, oil pan here. It's got this nice rib detail. Bolt detail down here. It all looks really good. I mean, this is uh, this is nice enough molding for engine parts that you know, if you wanted to have one of the side engine covers open, you could see all this nice detail. So it looks pretty good. Radiator fan, I'm guessing. Yep, all looks really good. A lot of little rib detail going on. It looks pretty nice. Yeah, it looks good. Real fine bolt detail going on there with some detail along the inside edge of this. So yeah, that looks pretty good. That's Sprue G. Looks like all the engine and associated parts. All right, and then last but not leastly we've got the clear parts so the windows windscreen wind wings as we call them here in the US <clears throat> and the headlight lenses and those look really cool they got some nice detail going on in the back there if you can see it but all of it looks pretty good and it's not very not very distorted. Let's look let's see. Yeah, that's some pretty nice molding there. There's no not I can't really detect any waviness going on. So yeah, those would be nice all buttoned up and still be able to see into the cab. So those all look really good. Now this one's kind of bent cockeyed, but hasn't detached so it should be all right but yeah that's clear parts looks pretty good so there you go that is an inbox review of the skoda rso rad schlepper ost kit number rv35005 so my thoughts on this one uh just looking at the plastic it looks really looks really nice um as long as the fits all or parts all fit together well uh, this looks like a really really nice kit so again this was uh, done for my friend Keith short so Keith when you finally watch this uh, I hope you enjoy it and uh, can't wait to see you build this one actually because I'm really eager to see how well it goes together so uh, thanks for watching as always if you have any experience with this kit or with this brand Put some comments down in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. Because I'm really intrigued by this particular kit. It's really kind of cool. So, anyway, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. And I will see you all later.